Welcome to 2024. If you're watching this video, then you and I are both here and determined to make this our year. 2023 was a little rough for me. And after some really honest reflecting, I feel like a lot of that could have been easily resolved if I had better systems and habits in place. So with that being said, let me tell you a little bit about my ins and outs of 2024. Ins, not scrolling my phone until my morning routine is finished. I cannot tell you the number of hours I waste just scrolling TikTok between the hours of 7 p.m. until 2 a.m. Elaborate skincare routines. Now that I'm in my late 20s, it is finally time to make good use of all of the products that I have bought but never really fully used. Inner peace. In 2024, if something is costing me my inner peace, then the price is too high and we're not participating. More reading, less scrolling, cats, kittens, everything cat related, of course. Home improvement. This is the year that I accept my fate, declutter and organize my home, and make sure it's a place that I really love being in. Self-compassion. When was the last time you were kind to yourself? I bet every day you say things to yourself that you would never ever dare to say to someone else. We're not doing that anymore. And finally, journaling and meditation. It's been on the New Year's resolution list for the last 10 years, but this is the year we're gonna finally do it. Outs. This year we are no longer people pleasing. The amount of times that I compromise my own values or things that I want for other people, this year I am going to be better at standing up for myself. Along the same lines, I'm gonna start being more clear, direct, and communicating exactly what I want. I'm also gonna work on not basing my self-worth off of achievements, because we all know how that went last year when I didn't hit any of my goals. No more online shopping of things I don't need. Just because it's on sale doesn't mean you need to buy it. And finally, we're gonna stop always being in a rush. The point of life is not to zoom through life. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Where am I trying to go? If you're new to the channel, welcome. You're watching the Life Unfiltered vlogs. I'm your host, Mickey, and let's get right into it. Not scrolling my phone before I complete my morning routine has honestly been the biggest change so far in 2024. There's something so peaceful about not knowing what my inbox holds just quite yet. For my cleanser, I've been using the Philosophy One Step Facial Cleanser since last year. This is also the cleanser in our guest bathroom because instead of having to use two products, you can just use one. It's one step to melt away dirt, oil, and even makeup. They sent me another bottle of this so that I could film this collab, but I'm gonna continue to use the original bottle for now. After that, I always go in with the dose of Wisdom Bouncy Skin Reactivating Serum. My skin has felt dull and dry and I recently started using this because it works to keep your skin bouncy, plumped, and radiant. For real, I can definitely vouch that my skin always looks brighter after using it and it just feels cushiony. I'll leave the links to both of these philosophy products in the description box below. Here is the look for today. I'm not going anywhere, but you know what? I thought I would put on a real outfit and look decent for once. I'm pretty sure my Uber Eats is here. So my priorities are to eat first and then maybe I will put a face on. <laughs> Can't tell, but it's just below 40 degrees outside. There's this place in Seattle called Secret Kanji that has the best kanji on earth. I don't know how they make it, but this is just so dang good. Itadakimasu. Mm, just as good as I remember. Every time I eat, Miss Lily gets very curious. Quick Lily update. Her and Lucky get along so well. It's like actually incredible to watch them just hang out with each other. Like she never snarls at him or anything. I feel like in the blink of two weeks, she's grown so big. I also wanna thank you guys all for your advice on the last video about kitty food and what to do. We feed her wet food in the morning at night and then we do three courses of dry kibble throughout the day. And I think that's been working for her. It also feels like she's been less hungry, so that's good. I also want to say that I really appreciate all the love on the last video. It was, for me, very vulnerable. I am somebody who only likes to talk about the good and I hide the bad 99% of the time. One, because like, you know, I have a good life. It's not that I don't have a good life and I am very aware that I am very privileged and for that I'm incredibly grateful. I think we all go through challenges no matter what walk of life you're in, no matter what life may look like on the outside. And so the entire thing has just taught me that you just never know what someone's going through to treat everyone with the utmost respect and the most kindness that you can. And um, like who will honestly just be better that way. Who's gonna try this Igari makeup look that has been so viral on TikTok? I'm gonna go in with a cushion foundation because it's kind of like a very light layer of coverage. My favorite thing about cushion foundations is that their shade range is non-existent and I am the darkest shade range and because I tan relatively easily, I can really only use them during the winter time when my skin is a bit more pale. This one is the Clio cushion foundation 
foundation. This is one of the most popular ones. I think you can order it on Amazon, which is great. This tutorial that I'm watching, this girl goes straight into doing shadows and I'm like, girl, did you not need concealer? <laughs> because I need concealer. Dang, I think this concealer is darker than the powder <laughs> foundation. LOL, we'll see how this turns out. We recently got this tiny, tiny cushion. Wow, the cushion is giving. Love that for us. I feel like I need to lighten my dark circles a little bit more. Okay, this is lighter. Next up, I'm gonna take this little angled brush and find a subtle bronzer. You don't want something that's like too strong. I'm gonna use the Hula bronzer and I'm just gonna carve out my nose. And then of course you want to do the little W down here. And then you're supposed to go in with really neutral eyeshadow. I'm gonna use this palette. It's my first time using it. It's very pretty. I think in general, I kind of want to stick to like blushier tones. I'm gonna go in with this one right here. My trusty Romand palette. Go in with this on the top. I'm gonna go with this more neutral one, actually. It's giving dark eye circles. <laughs> Hopefully this will fix itself. And then we're gonna kind of line the place close to our waterline a little bit with a little bit of a darker shadow. Ooh, okay. I can't remember the last time I followed a makeup tutorial. I'm supposed to take an egg cell pen and kind of define the egg cell area. Okay, I'm trusting the process. I need the blush, I think, to come in to like really see the look. Then you're supposed to go in with shimmery glitter. I'm gonna go in with a glitter pen to make it a little more dramatic. Okay, you're supposed to go in with a cream blush, so I'm gonna use this moist ampule blusher. Very creamy, as you can see. Oh, I feel like that's too much. Uh-oh. So the trick with the blush is supposedly you're not supposed to go past the cheekbone. I have one that's in a darker shade, so I'm gonna try that one because maybe this will be more prominent. Ooh, okay, yeah, this one is much better. You're supposed to blend inwards and don't go past the cheekbone. I'm like, oh, this might be too much. No, I look very, very um, red. <laughs> ah! Wait, I'm supposed to use some on my eyelids, so let me do that first. And then I'm gonna wipe away the rest of it. Okay, I'm giving very next day after partying vibes. Now, on top of this, we're supposed to do powder blush. I don't know how much more blush we can get here. This is the Ginger Pop. I use this almost every single day. And then now we just do the highlighter. Let's do this highlighter. It is actually like a pink based highlighter, so that works. And then we need to do a very thin layer of mascara and our lips. Let's do eyes first. The trick with looks like this is to use brown because it really like softens up the look. Heat up an eyelash curler. Now we're gonna go in with a little mascara fixer primer. Oh my god, I forgot to do my winged shadow. I'm gonna go in and do that now. Today I'm gonna do a little bit of a more subtle brown. With this one, you want less of a wing and more of just like bringing out your eye features. I'm going in with a brown mascara. You don't wanna go too thick, so not too many passes. Mascara done. Brows are pretty soft, not laminated or anything. So I'm just gonna go in with a brown brow gel. I feel like brows actually make such a big difference. When your brows are lighter, you tend to look a lot kinder. For lips, I'm gonna go in with a lip liner that's a little bit more nude. Oh my God, this is a lot neuter than my actual lip color. Add a little pigment in there. I think that looks much, much better. But it needs a final gloss. Ooh, this has glitter in it. I've never used this specific shade before, but I think I'm gonna try it. Just putting it on the center thirds of the lip. Okay, are you ready for the hair? We're gonna go from middle part to side part. I'm not gonna lie, I think side parts are in for 2024. It looks like this girl has her hair down and then just a couple of pieces of hair around her and then the rest of her hair is up. I don't think the look is to be super clean. Twisting this into a little bun. Of 
all the things that a girl needs. I feel like bobby pins is definitely one of the top things and I don't have any bobby pins except this one. So we are going to make do. I need to pull out a couple of these strands to come out on my forehead. Right there. Do y'all see the glue right there? Okay, I'm gonna glue her down. Okay, now I need to curl these strands, I think, so that it doesn't look so frizzy. I have never before used this in my life, but we're gonna try it today. Here is the finished look. I feel like it looks pretty good. It has been years and years and years since I've like followed a real makeup tutorial, but I feel like I don't look like me. <laughs> like in the best way possible. Wait, okay, I feel like that would really complete the look if we did colored contacts. Okay, I'm gonna go for it and try the blue. Actually, on second thought, I think I'm gonna put a beige in the other eye and see which one looks better. I think the beige one looks way better, so I'm gonna take this one out and put the other beige one in. Here is the finished look. Let me know what you guys think. This is the whole purpose of being a woman, being able to do fun stuff like this. I'm gonna say it. I don't think I've said this to myself in a very long time, but I feel really pretty today. I don't think I've said that to myself in probably over a year. Ah! I feel good. I feel confident now. I feel like I can toggle this day. I feel like I could achieve anything right now. I will absolutely clean um, at some point today, but right now I'm just really enjoying doing self-care stuff, which I feel like I haven't felt this way in a long time. I have two nail polishes to choose from. I think I'm gonna do one hand this and one hand that. I have been working really hard to try to clean up the place and I've been learning a lot about cleaning actually. A lot of it I learned from this podcast that I've been listening to, the Mel Robbins podcast, but she has all these incredible guests. And one of the most insightful things that I learned was that chores are something that happen in a cycle. And it's really important to identify whether a task is something that is cyclic or something that can actually be completed. Because I think a lot of us will look at our laundry or look at the dishes and it's almost impossible to get everything to be synced up in the same cycle where everything is complete, right? Learning that not every single thing has to be synced up, what is more important is to make sure that your cycles are functioning at a rate that are manageable and tolerable for you. Something that really struck me was that chores itself are morally neutral. And what that means is that oftentimes when our house is a mess, you know, cause there's that saying where you, if you have a clean space, you have a clean mind. And I think some of us take that too literally, at least I do, where I start to think that if my chores are not done, therefore that means that I am a failure and that I'm not doing well in life. But I really encourage you to think about like, why is the laundry not done? Were you working really hard on a project for work? There are probably so many positive reasons for why your laundry isn't done. And the laundry itself is not a positive or negative thing. Again, it's morally neutral. So reminding yourself that the chore has no direct correlation with your self-worth, I feel like has helped me practice more self-compassion. And when I have more self-compassion, I am more likely to get my chores done. Let me know if you guys enjoy hearing learnings and teachings like that for me. I love listening to podcast episodes and summarizing them. I wish somebody would do them for me because honestly, ain't nobody got time to listen to like a whole hour episode. I've always questioned the kind of validity of the Life Unfiltered vlogs because if I'm honest on this channel, the Life Unfiltered vlogs are my favorite, favorite thing to film. And I feel like people who watch the Life Unfiltered vlogs are genuinely people who know me very well and we are friends and I would just hate to lose the Life Unfiltered series, but I do feel like I need to like justify its purpose. The other thing I'm thinking about doing, and maybe you guys can let me know what you think, is to do like themed videos for the month. Every month I would pick a theme. So for example, one of the themes could be finance and I would teach you guys everything that I personally know about finance or how I manage my finances. Let me know what you guys think of that idea or if you have a better idea. I really wanted to talk to you guys about wedding stuff because now that it is 2024, Kevin and I had gotten engaged a couple of months ago and we said, okay, we'll start thinking about it in 2024. And now in the blink of an eye, 2024 is here. 
I'm not somebody who's ever had like a full Pinterest board. To me, like it's not that important because I don't need like a physical thing to show me that I am dedicated to like another human being. On the flip side of that, I do know that it's really important for other people who are around me, including like our family members, etc. And it's also one of the only opportunities to bring together the people that we love. You know, when I had a conversation with Kevin about it, we were both not super adamant about having a wedding. We either go big, like super big, or go super small. I just haven't decided which one of the two we are going to do, like an elopement and then maybe like a mini, mini celebration versus like the whole shebang. It's no secret that weddings are incredibly expensive. Like back in the day, even twenty, thirty thousand dollars was like an insane amount for a wedding. And now I have friends who like just the flowers alone cost thirty thousand dollars, which seems really absurd to blow on a singular day. And I just, I just don't know that that's like financially my priority right now, or what to do. Like I would love to know if there are any other couples who are in the same phase or maybe you've already gotten married or chose not to have a wedding. I did want to show you some of these really pretty bridal inspired photos that I got to take. I posted these on Instagram the other day but I'll pop them up on screen for you but I definitely want to have some sort of celebration and the pictures and videos and memories but I just don't know about the other people being there part I guess. I'm going to show you all the things that I've been able to teach her so far. Okay, Lily, sit. Good, sit. Sit. Good, sit. Come here. She's very food motivated, so anytime there is food, she's able to learn stuff, but if there's no food, it's pretty difficult. Pa. Good, pa. 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 Good, pa. She's just like a baby, you know? She can still learn. She's capable. Lily's learned some new things recently as well. Lily, spin. 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 Good spin. I'll leave the rest of that for her to feed and then she gets another bout of wet food tonight. Okay, if you have animals or kids, I'm so curious to know, do you have a favorite between the two? I'm gonna have a really honest moment with you guys. Please don't judge me. But whenever people said that between their kids, they don't have a favorite, I just found that so hard to believe. Because there's gotta be someone, something that you like more, right? It wasn't until that I had Lucky and Lily that I think I finally understand the concept of not having a favorite. I've been really intentional about spending extra time with Lucky recently just because there's new paws around the house. I have to say that on an individual level, there are things that I love so much about Lucky that Lily doesn't necessarily have and vice versa. In my heart, they truly are both my favorites, but in such different ways. I think I finally understand when people say they don't have a favorite. But hey, let me know if you have a clear favorite in your house among pets. I look like a crazy person because all of my face stuff is on, but I need to pick up Kevin from the airport, so let's go and do that. Hi. Welcome to the vlog. Hi. Thank you for picking me up. You're welcome. Sorry that I was... You're always waiting for me. It's okay, because I drive very fast. Who's home? What's that drawer, Lily? What's that drawer? Roll over. You gotta do your rolling over. Roll over. <laughs> Roll all the way. All the way. Sit. Down. Roll all the way over. Good, Good boy. Roll over. Oh my God. Sit. Good girl. Isn't it amazing that I taught her how to sit? She also knows how to do pod and spin now. That's so good. 